In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters of Christ, in Christ, dear pilgrims to Fatima, I would like to welcome you today here at this special place of apparition of Our Lady in this centennial year of apparitions. Especially I would like to welcome and greet a special group of congregation of the missionary sisters of the Holy Spirit who are having here an international gathering in Fatima. Leaders, provincials with their formators, they came here to listen to Our Lady, that she may teach them, she may for them, and on her intercession, their hearts may be transformed anew. Today we celebrate in the church the feast of the apostles Bartholomew. In the church, the Trinity Basilica will find also a door dedicated to these apostles, to this apostle with the inscription, which are the words he, he, of his confession. Jesus, Rabbi, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. He was given the grace to recognize who Jesus is, that he is the son of God. And I think Mary today is pointing us to Jesus to her son, that he is the son of God. He is our savior, that we may open our hearts to him. And we would like to do it also now as we start this Holy Eucharist. So let us prepare ourselves. Let us call to mind our failures, our sins, and ask our heavenly father for his pardon, mercy, and strength. I confess May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy.
Let us pray. Strengthen in us, O Lord, the faith by which the blessed Apostle Bartholomew clung wholeheartedly to your Son, and grant that through the help of his prayers, your Church may become for all the nations the sacrament of salvation. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the Apocalypse. The angel came to speak to me and said, come here and I will show you the bride that the lamb has married. In the spirit, he took me to the top of an enormous mountain and showed me Jerusalem, the holy city, coming down from God out of heaven. It had all the radiant glory of God and glittered like some precious jewel of crystal clear diamond. The walls of it were a great height and had 12 gates. At each of the 12 gates, there was an angel. And over the gates were written the names of the 12 tribes of Israel. On the east, there were three gates. On the north, three gates. On the south, three gates and on the west, three gates. The city's wall stood on 12 foundation stones, each one of which bore the name of one of the 12 apostles of the Lord. This is the word of the Lord.
You are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found the one Moses wrote about in the law, the one about whom the prophets wrote. He is Jesus, son of Joseph, from Nazareth. From Nazareth, said Nathanael, can anything good come from the place? Come and see, replied Philip. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming, he said to him, There is an Israel, Israelite who deserves the name, incapable of deceit. How do you know me, said Nathanael. Before Philip came to call you, said Jesus, I saw you under a fig tree. Nathanael answered, Rabbi, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. Jesus replied, you believe that just because I said, I saw you under the fig tree, you will see greater things than that. And then he added, I tell you most solemnly, you will see heaven laid open and above the son of man the angels of God ascending and descending. The Gospel of the Lord. Dear brothers and sisters, we are in a very special place where extraordinary things would be seen. Hundred years ago, it was these three children, shepherds, who saw a beautiful lady, our heavenly mother. It was an extraordinary thing. Nothing has something to do with the common life experiences. Then on the 13th of October, there was already a thick apparition of our lady. Crowds gathered here saw a miracle of the sun. It was also an extraordinary thing. When the sun all of a sudden started to spin, turn around, and it seems that it will crash to the earth. Extraordinary was also what happened afterwards. Before this miracle, it was a rain, everything was wet. And when this miracle disappeared, finished, everything was dry. I think we all who came here to Fatima are also seeing here an extraordinary thing. Just starting with these people who are kneeling and processing to this chapel of apparition. There's not ordinary thing that we see in our places we live. First of all, normally we don't see people who pray publicly, okay, in the church, inside, yeah. And even now there's people who kneel publicly. This is an or, or extraordinary thing. We see here people who pray in many languages, 
those of you who are coming in the evening for the prayer of the Holy Rosary, you may hear many, many languages in which God is praised, also very venerated. Even a kind of extraordinary could be if you go to the place here to the right when the candles are being burned, you see not only the candles, but also these candles in the shapes of the various human organs. Candle like the hand or the arm or the foot. And the people bring their offerings, either thanking for their healing or praying for a miracle of healing that is part, that is somehow suffering or not healthy could be healed. And I may add many other things that you some, some of you or many of you already observe here that we may consider extraordinary, especially this expression of faith, of penance, of prayer. But still, I think that what we may see with our eyes is not the most important what we can see and find here. Normally, what is most important, what is real, can be seen only through heart. Or in the other way, through eyes of our faith. And I would like to invite you now, in this moment, to move beyond what we see with our eyes and try to open the eyes of our hearts and try with our hearts perceive what we can experience here, what is waiting for us here, what could be a message for us. And we try to open our hearts. We have a beautiful example of our Heavenly Mother who call us here at this special place in Fatima to venerate her immaculate heart. This heart of Mary is heart to which we may have access to God. It's like the window, transparent window or the glass because it's immaculate, it's pure, it's not spoiled. There are no any filters, nothing through this heart we can see God and work of God also in her heart. And we like to, on intercession, also experience that also our hearts will be somehow touched by her message because she wants to talk to our heart to touch our lives. So if we look at the heart of, at this immaculate heart of Our Lady, what we can see there, first of all, we could see a resemblance of this love of the Holy Triune God. We all are loved by the most Holy Triune God. Our existence, our life, has its source in this love. So Our Lady want to tell us today, open your hearts to this love of God. Let your hearts be touched by this love, by this unconditional, unlimited love. There's the strength, soul, source of our strength of our encouragement of our life. Lady, our Mary appeared here as a beautiful lady. So she wants to tell us that only life with God is beautiful. Life without God, life that is not pleasing God is not beautiful. It's spoiling everything, ourselves, also the people around us. Our Lady, today, 
wants to tell us that she also loves us, that she is our mother, as a normal mother loves and cares for her children, that she also loves us and cares for us. If we go to the chapel of the Blessed Sacrament in the Fuaye before we enter this chapel, you will see a kind of like the statue in the form of the heart, plastic of the heart, of the Immaculate Heart of Mary, with two mirrors on each side. And if you come closer, you will see your face in this, in this Immaculate Heart. I think this is a symbol through which also Mary wants to tell us, you are in my heart. I, your, I am your mother. I am also here for you. I am ready to hear your prayers, your sorrows, your petitions, because I am your mother. She wants also to tell us how important and beautiful prayer is. Prayer when we connect our life with with God. It's nice when we do good things, when we show our love in the acts of charity. But our experience is that we cannot change many things. We cannot change other people. We cannot change the world. Only God can change the others. Also, only God can change our heart. And through prayer, we are telling God, look, we are helpless. We cannot do much. Only you can do this change that is necessary and needed. Mary encourages us not only to prayer, but also to prayer for the conversion of sinners. She is aware of the destruction, the, the sin, which means the life without God. Life that is not in line with God's will, not pleasing God, that this life is destroying the person and the whole world. Therefore, she called us to pray. If we want to improve something in the life, let us pray for the conversion of sinners. At the, same, at the same time as she is telling us that we should pray for the conversion of sinners, we should be aware that we ourselves are sinners. And if the people here and in other places pray for sinners, they pray also for us. I am aware that the people pray also for me. I myself am a sinner. I myself am in need of conversion. It's not consoling to know that many people, even not knowing me, are praying for me. That we are part of this blessed community that is praying for each other and strengthening to prayer each other. Mary invites us also to pray for peace. For peace in the world, for peace in our hearts. And we should never forget this, this prayer for peace. And we know what does it mean to live in peace in our families, in the places we live, and how much more we need peace in our own hearts. Mary is calling us to consecrate ourselves to her immaculate heart, because she knows that through her heart, we may also come to the transformation of our own heart on her intercession. The what really matters is our heart. That is our life, what we experience in our heart. That our heart will be like her, always ready to say fiat, yes to God, to his will, to his plans, to his proposals, also to the difficult times, to pain and sufferings we are many times going through. This heart, 
that is open to God, that wants to live to please and to serve God and to save, say, serve the neighbor. We are in a special place when extraordinary things can be seen. And this place is not only Fatima. My brothers and sisters, our heart is this special place when we, keep, when we see, can or can see or could see extraordinary things. And the things we will see when we open our hearts to God, then we will experience see what God is doing in our hearts, in my own hearts. And we will see that even though we will return to our lives, to our families, to our work, to the ordinary life, if our hearts are transformed, are open to God, we will see these extraordinary things, these great things that also saw Mary in her heart, we will also see these great, heart, the great things God is doing in my own life, in my own family, in the, in the society. So let us pray for this heart that on the intercession of our Lady of Fatima, of the Queen of the Rosary, our hearts will be transformed, transformed, will be open and attentive to the promptings, to the movings, to the things God wants to do in our hearts. And we will praise then and glorify God as Mary did, and we will be an instrument also of these extraordinary things for other people. We will be instruments of peace in our families, in our societies, for the whole world. Amen. We pray to God, our Father, who sent his Son, born of the Virgin Mary, to unite and lead the Pilgrim Church. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, successor of Saint Peter and shepherd of the Church, that under his guidance we may be protected against all adversity, we pray to the Lord. Lord For those who govern nations, especially where human rights are ignored, that they may recognize all peoples as children of God, we pray to the Lord. Lord For those who are victims of injustice against human rights, that they may lovingly forgive and accept their suffering in a spirit of expiation and reconciliation. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For all intentions entrusted to our prayer, that through the intercession of Our Lady of Fatima, we may obtain God's mercy in this holy place. We pray to the Lord. Lord for each one of us, united in prayer for the Pope, that we may recognize in him the presence of Christ and allow ourselves to be led by his pastoral ministry. We pray to the Lord. Lord Eternal Shepherd, hear the petitions of the Church in prayer on his holy mountain. Grant to the universal Shepherd of your Church unity of the faithful whom you entrusted to his care. We ask this to our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.
pray, brothers and sisters, that this sacrifice, mine and yours, may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. As we celebrate anew the feast day of St. Bartholomew, O Lord, we pray that we may obtain your help through the intercession of the apostles, in whose honor we bring you this sacrifice of praise. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you, Eternal Shepherd, do not desert your flock, but through the blessed apostles, watch over it and protect it always, so that it may be governed by those you have appointed shepherds to lead it in the name of your Son. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and all the hosts of the powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of hosts, you are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that it may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Anthony, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of resurrection and all who have died you know, in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed apostles, St. Bartholomew, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, 
O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, as it is in heaven. Holy bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we have this blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. And let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
Let us pray. As we celebrate the feast day of the blessed apostle Bartholomew, we have received the pledge of eternal salvation, O Lord. And we pray that it may be of help of to us both now and for the life to come through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We now say together the Jubilee prayer, consecrating ourselves and our families to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Help Mary, Virgin Mary, Queen of the Rosary of Fatima, blessed among all women, you are the image of the Church, dressed in the Paschal light. You are the honor of your people. You are the triumph over the mark of evil. Prophecy of the merciful love of the Father, teacher of the annunciation of the good news of the Son, sign of the burning fire of the Holy Spirit, teach us in this holy of joys and sorrows the eternal truth that the Father reveals to the little ones. Show us the strength of your mantle of protection in your immaculate heart. Be the refuge of sinners and the way that leads to God in unity with my brother, in faith, hope, and love, I surrender myself to you, in unity with my brother. Through you, I consecrate myself to God, O Virgin of the Rosary of Fatima, and thus, surrounded by the light that comes from the hands, I give glory to the Lord forever. Now we bless the religious objects that you have, the religious items. You want to be blessed here. If you can just lift them up, then we bless them. Heavenly Father, we ask you to, to bless these religious items that you have given to your children. Through the intercession of our Blessed Mother, Blessed Jacinta and Francisco, may they be a sign of salvation and transformation for those who will receive it and those who will use it. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now let us pray for the final blessing. The Lord be with you. And your spirit. On the intercession of our Queen of the Rosary, Our Lady, and of the Apostle Bartholomew, may the Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. <laughs>